And hello everyone, welcome back to another NIM tutorial. So in the previous tutorial we talked about if statements as well as the importance of indentation in NIM. In this tutorial we're kind of going to be building on the importance of indentation in NIM. Because indentation in NIM causes scoping. Now what scoping is, let's say we have a box. So let's go draw here. Let's say we have a little box here. Now this box keeps the value x, and x is equal to 2. Now this value x is not available outside of this box, and this box is already inside of another larger box, which might keep the value y, which is equal to 1, we could say. Now this x here should not be available to the outside scope. It should not be available to the box outside of it. This x should only be used inside of this tiny box here. And this y, this y can be used inside of the smaller box, but again, this y cannot be used outside of its current scope, its current box. So if we take a look here, there's another box here, but y, again, cannot be used here. If we have z here, z is equal to 3. z is available to this scope here. So if we were to print out z, we will get 3. But z is also available inside of this inner scope. If we were to print out z, we will get 3. Now the idea behind this is that you are safe to declare new variables inside of smaller scopes without it interfering with your already existing variables. So you won't have to worry that if you declare this y variable here, that this y variable might actually appear outside of this scope. But if you currently were to print out y, you will get an error because y is unknown. So you'll get an error. But the nice thing here is, if you were to put an x here, so if you were to declare x here and make this equal to a 4, then x will be available inside of this scope. So if you were to print out x, you will get 4. But in this scope here, x will print out 2. Because of scoping, when you redeclare x inside of this lower scope, x will be its new value. This will be the new x. So x cannot go into this scope. However, this x here will not affect this outer scope x. So this x and this x are two different x's. However, and there you can, if this x is a var, and not a let or a const, then this x can be modified here if you're not redeclaring a variable, but instead creating a new one. Or not creating a new one. Yeah, anyhow. So let me show you an example of this. So let's go, let z is equal to 20. Var x is equal to 10. Now here we have a block scope. We can use the block command to create ourselves a dummy scope. Take note of the indentation here. You need to indent to be inside of this block scope because this is a new scope, just like with the if statement. Here we can create y, which is equal to 30. If we were to echo out z, x, and y, or let's do it in order x, y, and z, then you will get and we maybe might just want to add it like that. There we go. This should be easier to read. We get 10, 30, and 20. That is what we expect. But now, let's say we create another block. Block. Now this block, we go and we say, let z is equal to 50. Now we do the same echo, but in this new block scope. You'll notice we don't get an error that we redeclared z here with let. It just allows us. But if we run this, z will be 50 in this block scope here. Whilst z is 20 in this block scope here. But if we were to try and go here and say let z is equal to 100, we will get an error because this z is in the same scope as this z, which causes an issue with which z should you really be using. But take note, we could go let x, or even var x is equal to 100. 
if we do that and the same columns are not necessary if we do that we get a hundred here for x as well but if we were to go x like this it will search for the closest x it can find which is this x so if we were to run this x will be 100 in both of these but let's say we were to go var x is equal to 99 and we could also do this echo but for the lowest scope we have and here we don't have a y so we'll just do x and z there we go now if we run this you'll notice this x here which is 99 it gets modified but this x here which is 10 right there it doesn't get modified this x will try and find the closest relative x it can have to modify if you were to put a let or var or const keyword here it will create a new x instead of going to search for a previous x in the previous scope or for the x in that specific scope so if you run this you'll see all the x's are different now this is just some basic things about block scopes you might want to know about. Cool. Now let's have another block scope example here. Let's say block I am cool. Now this is a block scope we have. We gave it a name as well, which is an optional feature. And then we can go echo I can stop. And here we can also go echo 1. And in here we can have echo three and in here we can have echo two yeah let's actually just do that echo one two and three if we were to run this we'll get one two and three we also break i am cool now what this will do is it will break out of this block scope so we can still have an extra echo here saying 209 but once it hits a break with its name in it it's going to break out of this block scope like that so now we don't get two we can also have another block so block two and this could be in block two but because it's saying block break i am cool this block scope will break as well as this one so this block scope and everything inside of it will break out it will stop executing the code in that block as you can see here this is just an example not too important don't know how much you're going to use this but just so you know, you can do block scoping using the block command. Cool. And now just always remember indentation, very important. That's the key takeaway from this indentation and scoping. So if you have a variable out here, you can create a new variable with the same name inside of this block scope or inside of any new scope, it's like an if statement or a while loop or whatnot. But you can also reassign it in here if it's a var. If it's lit, of course you can't because it's a constant, but if it's a var, you can reassign it here as well and it will modify the original or the closest to the highest block scope. And that's the basics on scoping as well as the block keyword in NIM as well as indentation. Very, very important. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.